All right, guys, how you doing? Just before I show you this review of Jurassic Park Dominion, I want to tell you a bit what's happening today. So basically, every time I've been trying to upload it, Universal keep hitting me with a copyright claim. So I had to look into it, did it two or three times, and every time the same. So I had to look into what was going on, and it's for three or four seconds of trailer edits that I've put into the review, just to make it a little bit more entertaining. Now, I don't know why they're doing it. Maybe it's not because it's such a favorable review. So I'm not too sure what's going on there, but come on guys at Universal, I've only got about four or five subscribers, so it's not a big deal to you. Come on, grow a pair of balls and let me do what I'm doing. Here's a review guys. All right guys, we're looking a bit rough today. Anyway, today we're here for Jurassic World Dominion. Saw the trailer to this. Now it seemed very focused on Blue and her baby. We saw the pterodactyls. I was looking forward to it. I like Blue as a character. I know some people probably don't. And you know, they think it's a bit too um, over cartoonified with having her as um, a dinosaur that can interact with our lead character. But other than that, yeah, I'm a, I'm a kind of a, you know, animal kind of person, animal lover and seeing that relationship with Blue, I did enjoy it, you know, saving the day in some of the films, in some of the uh, previous films, it was good, I did like that, sorry to say, I did. So I went to watch it yesterday and these are my thoughts. So the film turned out to be, for me anyway, nothing like the trailer. The trailer was actually more interesting and way more exciting than the actual film was. I was also looking forward to seeing the original cast again. Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and obviously Jeff Boglum. <laughs> Gold Blum. I love the fly. Anyway, super excited to see the original cast in this again. It brings that nostalgic factor back into it. The same nostalgic factor. There's a lot of films this year have had that, haven't they? Spider-Man, Matrix, I think a few others as well. What is it? The Year of Nostalgia. So I eventually got to see it yesterday and over the top cartoonish fun moments but the film itself is all over the place. We've got in effect two different stories, one with the original cast and one with a new cast and it's swapping and chopping and changing from one story to the other, you know, trying to get both to meet in the middle and the way they do it is it's not very good because both of stories are a bit all over the place. So we've got one set of actors that are trying to protect Macy from the previous film. And then we've got the other original set of actors that are doing their own thing. And to tie both stories together, we've got this um, corporation, this corrupt corporation that is a kind of an umbrella over both stories. It's got a significant hand in the story regarding Macy and it's got a significant hand in the story regarding the original cast as well. We've got a main villain in the form of a um, CEO of this corporation. You know, he wants global domination basically. He wants control over medical advances. He wants control over food and agriculture and he's a very weak villain it comes across as like a Jeff Bezos type a bit awkward a bit strange a bit up his own I don't think the cast even got a, a moment to shine we've got Chris Pratt and we know how he is he can be funny he can do action scenes and everything but I'm not given a moment to shine in this film is trying too hard to shoehorn everybody in all the original cast and these guys and not given a moment to shine at all really and we know he's he's great in guardians of the galaxies quick one-liners you know his action scenes he can do these action scenes very well like we know but in this nah in nah i really don't know what they were doing with this film now where the film does shine is in its chemistry with Sam Neill as the awkward Dr. Alan Grant and Laura Dern as a scientist Ellie Sattler. For me the chemistry is so good. It makes me want to watch the first film again and I think I will because 
the way they bounce off each other. Little comedic moments, little awkward moments. Love that. Jeff Goldblum, sarcastic, sharp, funny. Yeah, I did like his performance in this. But even considering everything is just so few and far between. There's fun moments, but it's not enough to save the film for me. No, not at all. Of course, with being a Jurassic World film, we know we're going to have a lot of CGI for those dinosaurs. And there is a lot of CGI. We've got dinosaurs running through villages. We've got chase scenes with dinosaurs. Now, a lot of these dinosaurs, you can tell they look cartoony. It's not like the original film where you could tell a lot of it was practical effects but you know a lot of this is cgi a lot of these dinosaurs are made up with cgi and you know you can tell and kind of makes it a bit cartoony but yeah it's, it's all right it's not too bad it wasn't jarring no i enjoyed seeing the dinosaurs again i felt the film was trying to do too much and cram too much into its runtime and you didn't need to it was all over the place you know we've got the side story of Macy, we've got the side story of Blue and her baby, we've got the side story of global domination, we've got underground dinosaur trafficking. With the second film left off with those dinosaurs getting let loose, I would have liked to have seen you know the aftermath of that, but now it doesn't go into that. It go it seems to skip far ahead where people are already trafficking dinosaur parts and uh, it didn't make sense. The film tries to um, convey certain important messages of what we're currently going through at the moment, you know, ethics, you know, ethics regarding scientific procedures, ethics regarding how companies are becoming monopolies and taking over certain aspects of our lives and the fact that we're allowing them to do so. Then we've got the problem of uh, trafficking animal parts, which, you know, it coincides with what we've got going on at the moment with, you know, certain countries that traffic animal parts of endangered species and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it tries to convey an important message, but the way it does it, the way it just skims over these aspects is, you know, it, it doesn't do it in a proper way. It, it slightly touches on them whereas its main focus is big dumb silly fun you know those moments are fun those chase sequences etc they're fun but the film doesn't leave you with anything it doesn't really leave you with much and in fact just like this review i don't know what more to say about the film really some fun dinosaur moments some fun action sequences but other than that no the film such a is such a level below what the original film was now, as a conclusion you would have thought that this film would have tied everything up nicely it would have been epic but no not epic at all just good bits here and there all brought together all wrapped up by a film that's a mess all over the place no not a good job whatsoever and in that my final verdict for this film is about a five out of ten nothing better than five out of ten could even say it's slightly lower but nothing saves it for me it wasn't very good that's all I can say that's all I can really say so what did you think of Jurassic World Dominion did you like it did you not like it did you think it was a waste of money going to see it did you think they could have done a better job so let me know what you think guys I'll be going back to the original trilogy and probably even the first two films but no this one of course it might have to be no I'm not even gonna add it to the collection I'm just gonna watch the good bits on YouTube that's how bad it was for me. Five out of ten, guys. Possibly even a four. Four and a half. I don't know what to say about it anymore. Don't even know what to rate it.
It was shit. And with that guys, I will catch you later on the next one. It was shit.